Good evening. Welcome to my laboratory. Uh, this is going to be the uh, Cherrier Experiment 2, I guess you would call it. This will be uh, gated higher frequency stimulation. What I've done is I've changed the suspension to make it much more like what uh, what uh, Dimitri shows in the um, in his video. Uh, so you can see that uh, I've got the two fine wires suspended they're on uh, either end of the spool. They're 25 millimeters apart and they go up uh, 85 millimeters, 8.5 centimeters to the top suspension there. And then um, right now what I'm going to do is feed the coil with uh, without using the MOSFET relay. I'm going to feed the coil with uh, unipolar pulses from the DP101 pulse generator uh, at the coil's calculated uh, RL frequency of 1046 hertz, 1046 hertz. Okay, and so we'll be looking at the current waveform uh, mostly as the uh, DP101 tries to push uh, its current through the coil without any intervening battery or MOSFET switch. Okay, so uh, let me see here if I can do that. So yeah, so we've got the DP101 output hooked directly to the coil suspension. That's an ultra-fast high current diode uh, across the coil there, hopefully to uh, Re reverse in the reverse bias direction to uh, absorb the uh, the uh, spike when the current to the coil is shut off and that's just to keep it out of the function generator um, the wire goes over there and into the DP101 now the DP101 has uh, the ability to be gated but right now I'm going to put it into the non-gated mode and uh, let's see let's turn on some oscilloscopes over here Okay, so here's what the output from the DP101 looks like. This is pretty much its maximum output. This is uh, 5 volts per division, so we're going up to 10 volts and then sagging a little bit as the current comes on. DP101 is not really a... S <laughs> Function generators are not designed to be sources of current, but I'm really surprised that this one is doing uh, as well as it is. Okay, so... Uh, uh, horizontal time base there is half a millisecond per division uh, and the uh, frequency counter right now says that we're going at 1055 so we're just a little fast I'll try to bring that down slightly to 1046 That's pretty good. It's very hard to adjust the frequency to very, very precise values because we're just using that little knob right there. Okay, so that's 1046, which is the coil's um, RL frequency. And I guess you can see that the red LED there is glowing dimly. And over here now we have the this uh, wires. The top trace again is the same trace as this. It's the, uh, the voltage applied to the coil from the DP101. And again, this is at 5 volts per division. So we go to 10 volts and then sag a little bit. Now down here is the current. Okay. So the current supplied by this DP101. Now this is at uh, 2 tenths of an amp per division. So we're not going quite up to even... So this is about one-tenth of an amp peak right there, uh, current provided by the DP-101. And then there's some spikes when the thing turns off and turns on that are uh, not being completely absorbed by that diode. Okay, so that's that stimulation. Now what I'm going to do is, uh, um, let's see, I'll just turn that, leave that up like that, and I'll just switch into the gated mode and now I have the F43 function generator set to produce a period 
very slow period of about uh, I want to go about 60610 or so 610 milliseconds which is about the natural period of the pendulation there we go 611 milliseconds which is the natural period of this pendulum arrangement here okay so now what I'm going to do is let the signal from uh, this guy gate turn off off and on the signal from this guy and let's see if we can get it to do that so there we go okay so now we're gating that uh, 1046 signal at a period of 610 milliseconds which is the natural period of oscillation of this pendulum so now you can see there I'm oh, sorry about the glare that's the overhead lighting uh, so I guess you can see that this suspension still allows plenty of torsional motion and that there's still plenty of interaction with the uh, uh, local environment uh, even from currents that are peaking at uh, around half an amp or so. Oh, I'm sorry. Um, uh, peaking at around 100 milliamps there. That's the peak there because we are at uh, we're at 200 milliamps per division right now on this. So we're only going up to about half of that. So the average current here is going to be less than 100 milliamps. And uh, that's plenty through the coil to provide a good interaction with the environment. Now I'm not really sure how, and that's with just uh, 10 volts peak uh, drive there which is the maximum I can get out of this this guy. Now the uh, DP101 is a much better current source than even this F43 function generator which is advertised as a high voltage function generator. Okay, just for completeness sake, let's take a look at what the uh, uh, waveform looks like uh, driving f with the F43 directly um, at that same 1046 hertz, 1047 uh, frequency. So, uh, turn up the F43. Now, I've, this is, uh, as you can see, uh, there, this is uh, 40 volts peak to peak into 50 ohms output impedance. And uh, so we should be able to get 40 volts up there if we were feeding a high impedance load. But I've got the thing turned up all the way. And uh, let's see, so you can see that we're at 5 volts per division here. So we go up just barely above, not quite 15 volts, and then the voltage sags quite a bit on the current uh, barely reaches uh, I would call it I would call it about uh, about 90 milliamps there okay and then if you average that current across the whole um, waveform you're going to get about half to a third of that 90 milliamps or about 30 35 milliamps okay and that's with uh, this function generator turned all the way up so I would be really surprised if an ordinary uh, non-amplified function generator uh, would even be able to actually produce uh, 20 volts into this load nor would it be able to supply more current than this function generator is able to supply. All right, there it is. All right, rocking and a rolling. Thank you for watching.